Well, well thank you very much, Fran. Um, first off, on, on your question, uh, I, I think the ability to repeal and replace Obamacare hinges upon what happens 50 days from now on Election Day. Uh, we're going to be able to either elect common sense uh, common sense officials like me who, who have a view of, of the healthcare delivery system in this country that wants to put people first rather than the bureaucracy, uh, or you can elect uh, you know, others who don't. And I think it's just imperative that we begin to, to put health care as a, as a main focus of this campaign for every single member of Congress in this, uh, in this country. It's that important. Uh, tort reform. You know, I, the district I'm running in will actually have the Madison County Courthouse in Edwardsville, Illinois, in the district. What is commonly known as the judicial, one of the judicial hellholes of America when it comes to, uh, when it comes to uh, uh, a lawsuit and the need for tort reform. And I think a lot of those cases involve medical malpractice suits where doctors then begin practicing defensive medicine, which adds to the cost of delivery of health care in this country and adds to the overall uh, the overall cost of, of getting access to health care in this country, too. Common sense tort reform needs to be part of any health care delivery system, and I find it com- somewhat offensive that it wasn't addressed at all in Obamacare. Yeah, friend, this is Tom uh, uh, responding as well and, and uh, just uh, adding a, a few comments to uh, Rodney's position. Uh, one is, is that the repeal of Obamacare is absolutely vital, and, and when we passed when, when we passed this piece of legislation in the House uh, on two separate occasions, it was a bipartisan vote, uh, as opposed to when the law passed uh, initially, which is all that tells you is that it requires leadership, and that's why I'm so proud of Rodney for stepping up and, and, uh, and, and running this year and, and assisting and providing that kind of leadership, and we hope that the leadership at the top uh, will also be one that will recognize that uh, this uh, this law is offensive to the American people and uh, destructive to quality health care, which is why it needs to be repealed and then replaced with positive patient-centered reforms. Uh, tort reform, uh, again, the, the, the fact that no significant lawsuit abuse reform at all was included in the president's law just uh, uh, gives evidence to the fact that this was not a serious effort to assist patients uh, to allow for patients to have greater choices or greater affordability or accessibility to quality health care. Uh, we believe strongly in, in lawsuit abuse reform, and we do believe that there are some uh, nexus uh, uh, pinch points in the federal government that would uh, provide for uh, states to be able to have an opportunity to uh, move in the right direction. Uh, all of the kinds of, uh, of health care coverage systems like Medicare, Medicaid, that have a, a, a federal nexus, the ERISA plans, the self-insured plans, we believe is an opportunity to provide incentives for states to, to uh, adopt the kind of, of uh, uh, lawsuit abuse reform that would end the practice of defensive medicine. And again, defensive medicine is just a little amount of uh, the cost of health care in our country. Uh, both Gallup and Jackson Healthcare estimate that, uh, that the cost of defensive medicine in this country runs hundreds of billions of dollars, somewhere between six and eight hundred billion dollars a year uh, of waste in health care just because of the practice of defensive medicine. Uh, even if they're off by a factor of 50 percent, uh, 400 billion dollars is a lot of money still in Washington, and we ought to be addressing it. And I know that uh, that uh, Roddy Davis is a strong advocate for. Con-